Hey guys, it's Chad. Hopefully you're finding this. This is my first Facebook Live message, and this is going to be weekly motivation from thegridmethod.com. <clears throat> I'll give a couple people a second to uh, find this and hopefully sign in. We have a couple people hopefully getting in right now. If you do get in, please uh, hit those little like buttons so that the fun things come across the screen because I'm sure that'd make me pretty happy. We got a couple people joining us right now. That's fantastic. If you can hear me, please um, just give me a couple likes or I see a heart floating across. That's good. I'm glad to hear. Lots of hearts. I'm feeling the love, guys. I appreciate that. Once again, this is a weekly motivation from thegridmethod.com, and this is something, uh, this is the first time we're doing this, so if you are joining us, that means that you are a founding member of this weekly Facebook session, so congratulations. Um, <clears throat> that means that you get to help us build this community where hopefully what um, we're going to be able to provide you with is some, some tips, ways to stay positive, ways to stay motivated. Because let's be honest, Sundays are hard, especially Sunday nights for teachers. And more importantly, Tiffany, how's it going? Um, great to see you, Jeff. Um, Sundays are really hard for teachers for the simple fact that we have to go into battle tomorrow. We have to wake up early, look really nice, go into our classrooms, and we have to go through battle and... That's really hard to sort of fight in your head, especially with um, Netflix calling you versus you having to prep for your lesson. Because right now, a lot of teachers, and I'm sure some of you out there are doing this right now, are Googling what they're going to do tomorrow. Maybe they're even YouTubing some videos. And you know when you find the really good, like the 15-minute long video that's going to take up like a quarter of your class? Yeah, that's, that's, that's like the gold little nugget. Well... Hopefully, as you guys start to uh, get into these weekly motivational um, spiels, we're going to get you through that week. You're not going to be YouTubing as much. And more importantly, we're going to help you teach better. So um, these are going to happen every single Sunday at 8 p.m. I'm going to try to be really good about this. Maybe we'll have a couple other people do them as well from thegridmethod.com because we have some fantastic teachers with us. Um... Most importantly, though, please like, comment, and discuss things in the in the thread below here, right down here, because that is how we are going to help build each other up. This is going to be a positive space. This is going to be a space where we can all enjoy each other's company and build relationships and, most importantly, um, help each other teach better. So um, if there's anything bothering you, please share it. Um, John, great to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well. Um, this week, I'm going to talk about three things to help you stay positive in your classroom. And let's be honest. If you've turned on the news recently, you have probably seen some pretty bad things going on. I mean, not only is like the whole new president thing kind of crazy, but more importantly, Betsy DeVoe thinks grizzly bears are going to attack our schools. So there's a lot of negativity in the world. Hopefully we have guns in our schools so we can fight the grizzly bears, according to Betsy DeVoe. So that will hopefully be helpful. Um, but there are three things that I'm going to talk about today that will um, help you stay positive. And the first thing is focus on your classroom. So whether it's grizzly bears or the politics of education or evaluation you have, a really great mentor I had uh, once told me that the best thing you can do as a teacher is focus on your own classroom. There are going to be hundreds of things, hundreds of things that probably bother you as a teacher, whether it's that student that's bugging you or maybe something that just happened in a meeting or maybe your principal is going to come in to evaluate you tomorrow or, you know, all those things. But if you focus on your classroom, you can keep your head straight 
And you can focus on what matters, which is the students that are in front of you. And by keeping your focus on that classroom and the small changes that will allow you to um, improve your instruction, that's when you're going to be able to stay more positive as a teacher. More importantly, your instruction is going to get better because of it. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to focus on putting out fires and not focusing on who started them. So by a show of likes or hearts or whatever you want, who's ever had like their principal walk in like right before class starts and say that you have to do something extra? Or maybe you have to take five extra kids in your class. Thanks, Tiffany. I know you've probably been there before. Well, a lot of times when those crazy last minute things happen, we tend to focus on what caused the problem. So we say, well, why do I have to do this? Or whose fault is it? Or why, why is it my responsibility when it's going to be much more effective and much more useful if you focus on the solution? So whether you're a teacher and an administrator or you work in regular business, focusing on solutions first is the best way to reduce stress and be um, solution-oriented. Because if you worry so much about what caused a problem, you're never going to actually create a solution to make your day easier. And when that problem finally gets to you, it's going to be worse than it could have been. So whatever that problem is, whether it's a jammed copier, whether it's a, <clears throat> uh, an extra period where you lose your lunch, or, or whatever that problem is, don't focus on the problem. Focus on the solutions first. You can always set a meeting with your principal at the end of the day so you can make that never happen again and I totally understand why that's important but always focus on solutions never focus on problems okay so that's two we have one more you guys ready can I get some likes if you're ready for the third the third thing that you need to do stay positive this week um, the last thing I want you guys to do is Increase student ownership in your classroom. Now, this is a really big statement in a small... Thanks, Jeff. This is a really big statement in a small um, sort of uh, piece. And um, increasing student ownership makes a lot of difference. Uh, Tiffany, it is tough when everyone around you is is focused on the negative. That, that focuses on what I just said. Uh, very well, and a lot of us work in those environments. But um, when you put these things together, it's going to get a lot easier. Um, especially, um, so number three is increasing student focus, uh, increasing student ownership. Anything you can do in your class, whether it's mastery learning, um, whether it's allowing students to take over the first five minutes, uh, maybe you do some goal writing, maybe you do some review. Um, anything you can do in your classroom to give students more ownership is going to reduce your stress level because that's something you don't have to worry about as much. I can be honest, the teachers I work with that implement the grid method in their classrooms or mastery learning or self-paced or student-owned learning, um, those teachers aren't stressed about what they're doing tomorrow. Those teachers are never worried about what their lesson plan is tomorrow because it's what they do in their classroom is being dictated based on their students' needs. And they're facilitators of their classrooms, not the micromanagers of every, every step of the way. So just as a reminder, three things I want you to do to stay positive this week. I want you to focus on your classroom, even though there's crazy things going on in the world outside your classroom. I want you to focus on solutions, not problems. Put the fire out. Don't worry about who started it. And I want you to try to increase student ownership in your classroom. Now, these are three very big charges I have for you guys, and it's not always easy to change your instruction. And I can be honest with you, we are always here at The Grid Method to help you teach better. We're always here. If you want to email me, you can email me at chad at thegridmethod.com. You can visit us at www.thegridmethod.com or right here on the Facebook page. Always leave us comments, direct messages, and likes and on our Facebook page. That also helps. But um, these changes are, are never going to be easy. But it's about chunking out these things in small steps, focusing on the positive, and focus on what you control. Um, I can't wait to see you guys next week. If you have some ideas or things that you want to talk about or maybe problems that you want to discuss, please leave them in the comments so then I'll review them and we can uh, see you next Sunday. So 
I'll see everybody Sunday at 8 p.m. next week. And hopefully, no, not hopefully, you're going to have a better week. And it's going to be because you watched this. So this was awesome. Stay awesome. Teach better. Have a great night.